thank you for joining us here today. Um, uh, we are having a project where we are trying to create salsa annotation using machine learning. And as you probably already figure out, I'm Eero. This is Anna. <laughs> and um, learning to dance is really hard. And I have myself so many dance videos and so many notebooks filled with stuff. And when I'm now looking at the dance videos, it's really hard to kind of see what happened because people are turning around and it's just really hard to kind of observe. And especially for beginning dancers, they don't have the skill to describe what they are seeing. They don't have the skill to observe what's going on. And when you can't that, you can't remember, you can't learn. And that's the step we are trying to come over. And there are some annotation tools, or at least there was. And, but these either require that somebody does the annotation for hand, it's either a teacher who puts it in, or you have to do it yourself. But if you're a beginner dancer, you're not gonna be able to do that. So therefore we wanted to do, use machine learning to solve it. And we have therefore created the Salsa annotator as a machine learning option. And what we are trying to do is to start with a simple salsa video, a handheld mobile phone camera. I mean, this has been solved earlier with complicated studio setup with many cameras and movement sensors, and, but we want to have something that people going to workshops can use. So therefore, we have a... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, five, six, seven. One, two, three, single right turn, go. One, two. So we are doing a model that has two different stages. First, we do post detection, and then we predict labels later out of this. And the post detection is really one of the keys here because it, the video, they are big, there's lots of data. And with the post detection, we are cutting down on the amount of data we need to analyze and use for predictions. Which, and also, uh, we are using open post because it's a very lightweight model. It's something that potentially could be used just in a handheld device too. And also the post detection helps to focus the analysis on the movement and the people. And there are some serious problems with the salsa because there are so many different salsa styles. People dance on one, they dance on two, they dance Cuban. There is no single annotation system either. So it's not like in ballet or some other where you have a very formalized system that you can use. And there are different artistic expressions. So people dance the same thing in very different ways. You might be a professional show dancer adding lots of flow and cool stuff, or you are a beginner who is just trying to like get through the thing. And in dancing, you have also people are rotating all the time and you somehow need to like allow the system to learn that these things are happening in different positions. And we tried to use YouTube, but that did really not work for us because there wasn't enough YouTube videos with single dancers doing the same things. There were all of kinds of things happening, but we need many examples of the same thing happening for the computer to be able to learn. And it was very time consuming to then to try to label all these different things and end up with so many different classes that we can't use. So therefore what we did is that we created a choreography and a crowd campaign. And we made a video and so simple choreography that people actually are able to do it. You don't need to be a professional dancer to go through it. And what we ask people to do is to do two basic steps, two right turns, two side basics, two Cuban basics, and two Susie cues. It's easy enough. Any salsa dancer can do that without much practice. And people started to send us videos. So we are getting videos in still. <laughs> so 
So we have kind of a data pipeline where we do start from the videos, which we resize a little bit. We take them to open posts. Now we are using collab, but that could be done in a different way. And out of that, we get the skeleton videos you have already seen. And from open posts, we get 2D coordinates. Unfortunately, we can't get like coordinates for the real space. So there are coordinates in the picture, which is sometimes misleading. And we, of course, then do some imputation of missing values. The, the stick figures, the poses, there's some jitter, there's some random movement that's coming from the pose estimation because it's a lightweight model. So we are smoothing that out. And then we normalize for each person so that we are only looking at the space they are actually using in the, while they're dancing so that we are cutting away. It's kind of like a bounded box for the dancing. And then we are augmenting the data a little bit, adding different perspectives and stuff like that so that we get more data out of it. And then we still need to do manual labeling where we mark where the different figures start, even if people are using a choreography. But that's something that, yeah. And in the end, we have then 384 examples of each figure and roughly 100 frames per figure. Okay, so when we have our uh, video processes and then we get the coordinates uh, out of uh, this uh, open post program, we move to the second part of our uh, model to predict uh, the name of the figure. So unfortunately for this kind of uh, task, we didn't find any pre-trained network that we could use. So this uh, action classification problem is a little bit different, of course, from the image classification. There are already some studies that have uh, generated some data for action, but actually the data that they use is very different. It's, for instance, um, being able to distinguish throwing a ball from drinking water. So I think this kind of uh, architecture wouldn't work for our problem in which the difference between different steps are very subtle, as you will see later. So we uh, build the model uh, from scratch. So our input right now in this part are the coordinates that we got from uh, open post, and then the model that we build uh, using uh, TensorFlow Keras has three layers. The, the first layer is a um, layer from uh, gate recurrent uh, units, followed by uh, two uh, fully connected layers. While this architecture, because of course we want to keep the temporal aspect that we our data has, so we have a consecutive uh, an order set of coordinates that is moving in a coherent uh, way in time. So um, our uh, the output layer has uh, five nodes with the five classes we are able to distinguish. Sorry if this uh, kind of label maybe is not uh, very intuitive for somebody who doesn't know. By ba um, basically, I don't know if you can see my feet in the video, probably not, but for the one being here, I want, I would, we would like the computer uh, to distinguish between doing this, for instance, which is a side step, and doing this, which is a Cuban basic step. So there are many, many uh, uh, possible figures for a start and then prove that this kind of approach can work. We decide to start with only five classes for our problem. So basically the model we predict the probability of, of, of uh, getting one of these uh, figures and then the one with highest probability will, uh, will be the label for our uh, problem. So we tried different architectures that have uh, um, similarities to the one that I presented here. We could play a little bit around with adding more uh, recurrent uh, layers, changing the size of the uh, recurrent units, also changing the size a little bit of the connect layer, but actually, the accuracy of the prediction didn't change too much. So here I will show an example. In the left side, you can see a training and validation losses. So we can see that after from the green, from the orange curve, after 20 epochs, 
we can stop our training and then take the model that we have at that point because after that we see uh, overtraining. And then on the right side, you can see the accuracy for both the validation and the training set. So we reach an accuracy of around 60%, which is three times higher than the one that you would expect uh, from a random generation that will be 20% in our case in which we have uh, five classes. So here you can see, for instance, two examples in the validation set of how, uh, what our model predicts. In the left side, you have a, a right predicted um, label in which you can see that uh, I cannot see. Sorry, you have eighty percent of the figure that is uh, being uh, executed to be a basic step, and it actually it is. And in the right uh, side, you see an, an example in which. Uh, is completely misclassified the basic from uh, the Cuban basic. Here now I'm, I'm presenting a general summary of the results that we get in the whole validation set. So we can see that more or less uh, all the metrics show a similar prediction for the five figures, which is all suspected because we make sure that the data that we are uh, working with is a balanced uh, data set. For this reason, we created the choreography with the same amount of, of elements. On the right, you can see the confusion matrix in which you can see how many times a figure is uh, misclassified by another figure. So let's say if you go on the top row and then you move to the right, you can see that a basic step is Nine, uh, 19 times correct, um, predicted uh, correctly, one time is misclassified uh, with the right turn, and so on. So I think these numbers doesn't tell too much, so I think it's better to see uh, how the prediction looks in the... Um, in a video. So our idea of the project, of course, is to end up with the application in which a person can upload a video and then we run our model prediction and we will get the names of the figures that the person is doing. So let's see, this is still not finished. So it's just a prototype of how it would look like. Okay, so one thing, remember that our um, pipeline has two steps. The first one is to predict the skeletons over which uh, actually the labeling is predicting because getting the skeletons requires the use of GPU and we run this in collab. We cannot present still this, uh, the, the whole flow automatically. So what we did, we select three videos that were not used neither in the training or in the validation set. And then we run open post on that. We have the data. We also indicate where every figure starts. This is something that unfortunately the program cannot do still, but we have some ideas on uh, how this uh, could be done. And what is running here in, in real time is just the labeling. So the, the calculation of the label for the size of video we are using is quite uh, fast. So let's see how it looks. We go here, we take one video, Then it's uploading. And then you have in the fair columns, uh, the predictions in the right column, the true labels. This is only for demonstration because of course in the application, you will not know what, where, which the labels are. This is just to show if the program is working or not. Um, yeah, here is 100% accuracy. Actually all the steps that this person is doing are reproduced exactly with 100% of accuracy. Of course, when I see this girl dancing, I can figure out why the program can recognize very well what she's doing. If you take a look, she's really doing the steps properly. There is not too much, too much movement of the arms, something that actually when you are dancing salsa is not the case. She's doing like this just because she was repeating the choreography that we sent in which I think for the purpose of this uh, uh, exercise, we really did with not too much movement. So if we check now a video, another one, let's see what happened. So here we have Basil. It's a longer choreography, so we have more labels. And then you can start seeing that uh, there are steps that are correct 
uh, are predicted in a proper way, but there are some that are misclassified. For example, the first step you have that um, a basic step was misclassified with the Cuban basic. But let's see what Basile is doing. It's not that he's dancing run, all the contrary, but he has much more fluidity in the arms than the previous uh, dancer. Also, we realize that the basic still is not actually that you do all the times the basic in line. You could also uh, cross your feet a little bit. And of course, we are not pretending with this type of uh, application to say that people is dancing wrong. No, this is not the, <laughs> the idea. This is one of the things that we uh, realize with this kind of apps that um, saying that something is wrong or right is not uh, really accurate because dance is very open. So you can do whatever thing you want. But what, what is sure is that for this type of problem, we need much more data because then we can actually capture all this uh, little difference in styles that people can uh, have while they are dancing. But uh, still, we think that having this kind of uh, application for somebody that can just take uh, their phone and then take a video, then record it and then find what they are doing, right? So let's continue then. And let's just move to a future world that we think that can uh, really improve what we have until now. So we have two directions in which we would like to work. The first one is how to improve the accuracy of the model that we already have without changing too much. So first of all, as I already uh, said, and as you all know, more data. This is fine because we have still this uh, link open. We are collecting more videos. There are even people in this room do, who owe me some videos that please, I, we can collect it still even if the, the demo date is, um, is finished. We can do other things. Uh, we have a very nice uh, suggestion from Tristan that we, we are really happy to try to try. Uh, that is uh, try to use uh, self-supervised learning for our problem. And what does it mean? With the data that we already had, we can try to take our network architecture and then to solve a slightly different problem. So we will remove the uh, last layer of our classifier, and then instead we will have an auto-regression problem. So we will uh, try from the frames that we have to predict which is the next one. So for that, we don't need any layer. So with this kind of model, maybe the network learns a little bit better about the movement itself. Then we can come back again to our classifier, remove again this uh, last layer and add our classifier layer, and then to do some fine tuning in this uh, network. There is another um, uh, way to go that I was really, I mean, we were very surprised to see that something like this uh, can happen. Apparently in machine learning at the end, everything can be reduced to image and also motion. So we were surprised to see some, unfortunately I don't have he, uh, here the um, uh, examples, but there are some papers that suggest to transform your skeleton uh, collection of frames into a, just an RGB image. And then, of course, once you have an RGB image, you can use all the pre-trained uh, neural network that exists in com uh, computer vision, and maybe the prediction is better, and then we don't have to start the learning from uh, scratch. And another way we are hoping to go is to extend the functionality a little bit uh, so that uh, we can easily from the open posts coordinates calculate things like how much people are moving their shoulders and how soft they are dancing and things like that. And also when we are looking at the wrongly labeled figures, uh, it looks like that it might be better to use only the count to four instead of eight. So to use smaller units to label kind of half the size the figure length that we are doing now, because many of these figures have the same element in the beginning or end, which then confuses the learning. And the obvious thing is we need to add beat detection. And there are already models who do beat detection. We just need to kind of 
put it in and make sure that it's working together with our data. And then we need to extend this to a couple, which I think is possible. It might be that we have to drop open posts, but there are some other uh, post detection systems that are better, but they are harder to process. They are much heavier. So it's kind of becomes a choice then, is it possible to gonna do fast in our app or are we gonna have a heavy um, processing in the backbone of it somewhere hidden? And of course, now we did the choreography with five labels because this is easy. This is something that people can easily learn. So we have to make more choreography so that we get more examples of other figures so that we in the end then have like 10, 15, 20, 25. And hopefully we have then enough names of figures that it actually becomes interesting because with just these five, it's a proof of concept. It's not something that you can actually really use yet. And we would like to thank our mentors, Christian and Marcos, all the dancers who were making videos for us, the data science retreat team, all the teachers, and of course, all the participants who have been on this journey together with us. Thank you.